Hello and welcome to part 5 of this video tutorial where we're looking at making a robot head. Uh, now you may remember from part 4 that in the last part we left the uh, robot hanging from a bunch of chains from a uh, stand that we'd made. Uh, so in this part we're going to be looking at adding additional detail into that uh, stand, uh, adding a base to it to support it all and just adding the final touches to the sculpture itself. Now I'm part way through moving house so I've uh, moved back to my mum's at the moment um, but luckily she actually has a garage so for a change I've actually got a decent space to do some work in. So what I've got here is a wooden block and I've drilled in a 15mm hole there um, and also added a supporting block so that'll just let me put the sculpture in there and hold it quite securely. Um, I'll also drill some holes through and put in some bolts a bit later on just to make sure that's fully secure. Now what I've also got here is some uh, more copper piping. I've got the regular 15mm uh, stuff but what I've also got is some 28 mil pipe as well. Uh, I've also got this uh, sheet metal here, so I've got some brass, but I've also got some copper sheeting. So what I'm going to do is use these pieces to create some uh, mechanical detailing that I can then solder onto the uh, existing framework of the stand. So what I'm going to do is cut out some um, short lengths of 28 mil pipe using this um, pipe cutter here. And there we go, so there's my first uh, piece cut out, so I'll do three more of those and then we'll be ready to um, attach the ends to the canisters. Well, so there's my four row pieces cut, uh, what I'm now going to do is just scrub around the edges of the pieces on the copper pipe in there, so I know the size, um, and then cut those out. How do you cut this you might ask, well actually uh, if it's thin enough you can just do it with regular household scissors, uh, so that's what I'm going to do here. Um, I think anything up to about one mil thick you can probably do with scissors, um, anything above that I think you're probably going to need a bandsaw to do that with, uh, but luckily this stuff's pretty easy to cut and shape, so I'm just going to cut out some um, pieces there. As before, I'm adding some flux to the metal. Um, this is the, where the flux goes, is where the uh, solder will go, um, and I'm going to start soldering these together. As before, it's just a question of heating the metal evenly, uh, moving the blowtorch about, um, and I'm just touching a piece of solder to the uh, to the metal there to see uh, what sort of temperature I'm at. Um, and as before, um, as the metal heats up, you eventually reach a point where the solder suddenly spreads across the whole joint as though it's sucked in um, and that happens when the metal is at the correct temperature. Now I was probably a bit remiss uh, in my previous episode where I didn't say uh, perhaps enough about safety. I mentioned that it's probably a bad plan to do it in the front room uh, which of course is what I was doing um, but it's also worth saying as well that um, it's very easy to forget how hot these things get. Um, that blowtorch um, although it's tiny does put out a lot of heat um, and it's so easy to do your do your soldering, turn the blowtorch off, and then just pick the piece up, totally forgetting that the things are about 500 degrees. Um, I've done it before, and it's quite painful. So uh, please, please, please uh, be careful when you're doing this. You know, wear eye protection, uh, full on radiation suit, and um, if you have to, you know, if you're anything like me, quite accident prone, then uh, you know maybe a suit of armour would probably be appropriate. But um, and to be honest, once you've made one or two mistakes, you'll swiftly learn um, where the uh, ins and outs of this thing are. Oh, and fire. Of course, it is entirely possible to set fire to things, so um, obviously be, be wary of that as well. Um, you know, once I, like I said, I'm moving house soon, and um, once I've actually got my place sorted, I'm going to be building myself a, uh, a garage. Uh, and I think um, one of the things I'm going to have to invest in is some fire extinguishers. I've never actually set fire to anything, but obviously the possibility remains, and um, you, you know, you do need to be careful with this stuff. So. Uh, you know, be on the lookout if you do decide to have a go at this. Right, so there's my solder piece. Um, now the next thing to do is to trim off the uh, edges of that um, flat piece of copper there, and then just uh, file the edges down and try and get a nice uniform finish uh, on the piece. Um, as before, it's really easy to cut with scissors, so I'm just going to trim the excess off. And as I mentioned, I'm halfway through moving house, so I'm back on mum's at the minute, and um, the good thing is she does have a garage, and, she do and we do have some of my dad's old uh, bench tools here, so I'm just using a disc sander to uh, cut down to find away some of the excess copper there. So that's got rid of the bulk of it. Um, now just a question of uh, a bit of hand uh, filing to just get rid of the uh, last few bits and then a bit of um, a bit of sanding with some sanding paper just to give it a nice finish. And there's my four uh, finished uh, copper canisters there. Right, so here's how the pieces are going to sit on the uh, final model. I sort of want to have them angled looking down. Um, so perhaps they are, I don't know, maybe uh, there can be lasers coming out the bottom of these that are sort of aimed at the model, or maybe they're fuel vessels that are uh, there to refuel the piece, um, something like that. Now the problem with this is how do I hold the piece in place while I'm going to solder it? Uh, obviously I can't hold it with my hands because it's going to get very hot. 
I could use some pliers, but the problem with that is that I'm also using a blowtorch and some solder, so I effectively need three hands. So what I've done here is to hold it in place with a uh, rod of aluminium. Um, the reason for that is that the aluminium, the melting point of the aluminium is so much higher than the other metals that it's not going to uh, join to the uh, to the uh, sculpture if a bit of a solder gets on it. Um, so what I'm hoping is that this will just hold it in place while I do the solder, then I can remove it and that will leave it in place. Right, so there's my uh, finished uh, solder joint. Um, yeah, that's pretty good. Now, one consideration um, where, with this, when you're soldering a, a piece which has other solder joints in it, as you heat it up, um, the possibility remains that um, some of those joins, as the metal heats up, will suddenly come apart. Um, for larger pieces, it's not necessarily a problem because um, the piece is large enough for the heat not to travel through the uh, sculpture enough to reach a high enough temperature for the joints to fall apart. But when you're doing soldering of joints that are quite close together, the possibility always remains that um, your piece may just simply collapse um, if you heat it up too much. Um, now that didn't happen on the first canister that I, uh, I soldered, but as you can see, um, it's happened here. Um, so I'm going to have to come up with another way of holding this in place, I think. Um, although it worked on my first joint, it's obviously not worked on my second, so I need to come up with an alternative for that. Well, what I've come up with is to use some uh, helping hands. Uh, these are just uh, a frame with a set of crocodile clips on. Um, they're used for soldering electronics together. And what I've done is just to clamp that to the uh, frame there so it's high enough to hold my piece in place. So I think that's a good trick because uh, it's not actually exerting any force on the disc that I've soldered on top. So hopefully that will hold, uh, hold together. And I'll just carry on soldering, uh, soldering all these pieces together. So I'm just soldering my final piece in place here. If I've decided to just use three of those uh, pieces that I uh, created earlier, um, I may use a fourth if I find a use for it, but I think that looks quite nice like that. Right, so I've just put the uh, head back in place just so I can um, see how that looks. Um, it's possible to sort of uh, add a load of bits and then realise they don't work with the uh, overall piece in context. So I just want to put this in place to see how it looks. So I think it's looking okay. Um, so I'm going to continue adding uh, detail. Right, so just rummaging through one of my boxes of junk and I've got a bunch of um, cabling here which I think is going to come in handy. Uh, so what I've done is to cut some lengths of uh, conduit. Uh, this is slightly larger conduit than stuff I've used previously. Uh, I'm going to add that to the model. So I think that's going to add some nice uh, texture, uh, some mechanical looking detail to it. And what I've also got is an old um, metal tea urn, uh, which has also been sitting in the box for ages. I think that might look quite nice as a sort of a, um, I don't know, like a fuel vessel or something like that. Uh, so you can see how the uh, conduit might work with that. So I'm just drilling a hole in here to uh, secure the uh, tea urn with a bolt. As you can see here, I've just put two bits of wire through the uh, main supports there. And this is so I can just attach the conduit to these and they'll give, uh, they'll hold it in place just with a bit of mechanical uh, join there rather than simply holding it in place with glue. So what I've also got here is a length of um, hose from a uh, old uh, vacuum cleaner. Uh, I think it's all look quite nice if I actually add that to the back of the T-urn as well. Now handily that actually fits uh, in exactly and uh, sort of hold it's sort of uh, quite a snug fit so it sort of holds itself in place uh, so that's good so you can sort of see how that might sit so there's how all that looks so far um, I think what I'm going to do now is turn my attention to the base of the sculpture so for the base um, as you can see I've trimmed down the uh, bit of wood that I had there I didn't need anything um, quite as big as I had. Um, what I'm going to do here is I want to be able to screw the uh, metal to the uh, wooden base. Um, so I've drilled a hole in the side there which also extends into the, um, the copper pipe. Um, what I want to do is actually put a screw thread uh, into that um, hole in the pipe so then I can um, screw a bolt straight into the uh, metal and that will hold everything in place. So what I'm going to do here is take a um, tapping wrench, uh, which is uh, basically a little bit like a drill bit, um, except that it's got a screw thread on the outside. And what you do is you twist that into the hole that you cut, and that will uh, add a screw thread um, to the, uh, the interior edge of the uh, metal. Um, so I'm just sort of tr slowly uh, screwing that in. And that's letting me uh, now screw a bolt in straight into the metal, and that should hold everything together quite securely. So I also need to make the uh, base look a little bit more attractive. Um, so this is a technique I've used um, quite a lot. And what I'm doing here is just um, using some styrene plastic to just cover the wooden base so that I have a nice uh, flat um, finish. The styrene is a really nice um, material to work with because it can easily be joined uh, together with uh, contact cement. What this does is it literally just melts the plastic um, and help them let you join it together that way. So it's quite um, easy to shape and uh, join together and come up with a very solid piece. 
Right, so there's the pieces of my base all joined together, and the edges need a bit of uh, trimming and filing down. That is uh, for all intents and purposes finished. Um, I also need to um, obviously cover that last remaining piece, piece of wood there, and add some additional uh, mechanical detailing just to give it a bit more of a uh, industrial look. Right, so there's a finished stand. Um, as you can see, I've added a little bit more uh, mechanical detailing on there. Um, and I've also come up with this um, sort of mechanical arm device here, which is made out of a few sort of found pieces and there's bits of a uh, bits of an old hard drive in there, a few pieces from an old uh, VHS player, and some little sort of a uh, plastic toy thing, which I, uh, I bought from Tesco's a while back, and that's all attached to like a, a light fitting, I think. So now I'm going to uh, give this a quick blast of um, undercoat spray paint, uh, and then get on with the painting. So it's really the same process um, that I use to uh, paint the, um, the head uh, here. So what I've done, what I'm doing here is just adding some um, areas uh, with metal and rust pigments which will be um, masked off and then exposed um, by scraping away the uh, upper layer of paint. So I'm going for a sort of an off-white colour here so I think it will um, help the uh, rust colour show up quite well. And the other thing I'm doing is giving it a, a quick um, wash of various oil paints to give it a sort of a weathered look. Right, and there's my uh, fully finished piece. Um, I'm quite happy with that. I quite like the way the uh, the um, base is weathered um, slightly differently to the head. So it helps the head stand out a little bit. As I mentioned before, with this sort of thing, you really can just keep adding detail um, endlessly if you want to. Um, and I could have continued adding more and more here as well, but I think it's probably a good point to leave it um, so that the uh, the base has some detail on it, but not enough to sort of distract you from, from the main actual piece. So thanks very much for watching. Uh, if you've persevered this long, uh, all the way through to part five, then thank you very much. Um, it certainly got a bit more uh, involved than I thought it would. And I realise I've sort of skimmed through quite a few different techniques here, but I hope it might give you some ideas for uh, projects that you might be working on yourself. Um, I'll certainly be posting more of my future projects here, so uh, please do tune in again to see what's, uh, what's new. Thanks very much for watching. Thanks very much for watching. Uh, I'll be posting more videos on future projects, um, so please do uh, subscribe if you'd like to keep up with uh, what's going on. Uh, you can also find out more on my website, which is uh, www.thedarkpower.com, or you can follow me on my Facebook page, just search for The Dark Power.